So what is homesteading? And what is a homesteader anyway? What makes your garden grow water and sunshine? What makes your spirit grow knowing that should be mine? Hi guys, this is Jack from Freedom Homestead. And that's a question that we get asked a lot. Uh, when we're out and people see Freedom Homestead on our t-shirt here, or, um, you know, in conversation, we talk about our homestead. They ask us, well, what is homesteading? And then we have to explain what it means to us and our family um, with our homeschooling, with our gardening, with preserving and storing our food, um, and just the things that we have going on here that applies to our family. But homesteading is a very broad term and it, it has a lot of definitions. So we want to cover that. What is homesteading today in our modern culture? I guess first we need to go back and look at what it meant uh, in our history. And the term homestead, I think most of us um, in history are familiar with the Homestead Act. Back in 1862, this was signed by President Abraham Lincoln. It was during the Civil War. It opened up millions of acres uh, to any adult citizen um, and to claim land. And uh, some of the stipulations, it was 160 acres. They could file for 10 bucks, they could file a claim. The stipulation was they had to live on that land for five years and work it and improve upon it. And after five years, that 160 acres was there, was, was theirs. It, it, and that was awesome. And they estimate about 800,000 claims were made uh, during that time period. And in fact, um, according to one historian, about one third of all black Americans owned their own land and homes because of the Homestead Act by the turn of the century. Um, this did not exclude black Americans. It did not exclude women. Women could make claims and have their own land as well. This was a government program and it was designed to also boost the agriculture industry in the country. And if all of these new lands were being settled and developed, um, this was also gonna boost the manufacturing industry in the East because they needed tools, they needed equipment, they needed supplies. So it was a, kind of a win-win on both sides. Many families went out West to claim land and try to make it their own. This was harsh conditions. They had not experienced the weather in the Great Plains area, Tornado Alley, um, and the high winds and stuff like that. Um, I think most of us think of the Homestead Act back then with Little House in the Prairie, that television show, Charles Ingalls and his family. That was all part of the Homestead Act. Um, in fact, that's based on a true story. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, my family actually went to Washington, D.C., and in the National Archives building, on display is the original uh, homestead claim from Charles Ingalls. We got to see that. It was on display in the National Archives building, and that was really neat to see that bit of history from that time period. So we do associate, I guess, homestead or the homesteading uh, terminology from that time period. But in the last decade or so, that term has been taken off the shelf, it's been dusted off, and it's been uh, revitalized in modern culture. So let's look at what this term means to us today. Um, and it, it can be very broad and mean different things to different people. Um, the best way to start this off is we were recently at a homestead gathering of a lot of like-minded people and friends of ours, and we pulled them off to the side and we interviewed them and we asked them, what does homesteading mean to you? How would you define it in your own terms and apply it to you today? And this is what they had to say. So as modern day homesteaders, what does homesteading mean to you? Well, what it started off meaning to me was this glorified view that I was going to raise all of our own food and grow all of our own food. And I don't know if I've seen a big difference in the grocery bill yet. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I think it's just trying to do your... Hmm, 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 hmm. For me, it's trying, trying to kind of get back to old ways. Trying to learn how to do things for yourself instead of relying on somebody else to do it for you. Whether that be gardening, no matter what size, even if you just got one plant in the windowsill, you know, gardening of some kind, or raising animals, or baking bread, or making an entire meal from scratch, or only cooking over a fire, whatever it is, trying to do something for yourself instead of someone else. I like that. I like that a lot. In your own words, like your idea of what, what is a homesteader, what, what does that mean to you? What does homesteading mean to you? It means taking things back to where it was, not as in a conventional way as it is now, but we, we're trying to go back almost 100 years, and we look at it as um, sustainability, um, we look at it as stewardship, and we look at it as making satisfaction from those things. So the hard work from sustainability and stewardship provides the satisfaction with it. Uh, you know, sometimes it's hard maybe to get up and milk, or sometimes it's hard to get stung by bees all the time, but it, it allows me to have that, that satisfaction to say, hey, we're eating these things, produce and dairy, and all these this meat from our farm, and it provides a satisfaction that hopefully provides us sustainability, but letting us know that we can be good stewards of what God has given us in this earth. So, that's good. That's good. Okay, friends, here we have with us Jeff from the channel Homestead Dad. And we're going to ask Jeff a couple of questions. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. So we are asking all of our friends to share with all of our viewers, what does the word homestead mean to you? So homesteading to me, it means doing what you can with what you have where you are. Um, so I've talked a lot with a lot of people about this and it, you don't have to have five acres or 10 acres or 20 acres, you can be living in an apartment mm -hmm. and growing as much food as you can on the, you know, the deck of your, your apartment. And to me, that's in the spirit of homesteading. I agree. Um, so that's kind of how I define it. In your mind, what is homesteading? What does it mean to you? Kind of what, in, in your own words, how would you define it? I, I was actually asked the other day, where, what, what does it mean when I say I'm a homesteader? And to me, Homesteading means being as self-sufficient and as self-reliable on myself and my community of other homesteaders as I can be. If another homesteader out there needs help with something, us homesteaders, we go and we help them. If I need help, they come to me. And here in Michigan, we actually have a Southern Michigan YouTubers mobile butchering team. That's what we call ourselves. And you know, last winter we did three pigs at a guy's house. We done 50 chickens at the Pratt's and it's just like-minded people being knowledgeable of other like-minded people in the area and helping each other out. Okay, okay. So I am here with Todd from 1870s Homestead and hey we are going to ask him a couple questions. Are you ready? So we're asking all of our friends to share what the term homesteading means to them. So in your own words, what does homesteading mean to you? Oh, it's like doing doing everything that you can to supplement food that you would normally buy at the grocery store with food that you've grown yourself. That you know the ground that it came out of, the lack of chemicals that were put onto that food. You were the one that watered it, you harvested it, and you preserved it. That's, that's primarily what it means to us. And there's a whole lot of other skills that go along with it besides just growing food. There's the preserving aspect of the food, the canning, the dehydrating, the, the charcuterie side of, of meat preservation that we're trying to learn. So it's like a never ending, you, you could spend your whole life yeah. learning skills, homesteading skills, and still not be not be done. I completely agree with that. I think with, yeah, with homesteading or any kind of self-sufficiency, I don't think you ever really arrive because right. there's always something to learn, something to perfect. Again, it's really hard to pinpoint an exact definition of what homesteading is, but I think we've narrowed it down that first it's a mindset. It's a mindset to be more self-sufficient. It's more of a can-do attitude. I want to be able to do more instead of relying on uh, a store or an industry or a government either for food or energy or school or education, whatever it may be. You just want to be able to do more yourself. And I could hear that in all of those interviews. Uh, skills that maybe 
the previous couple of generations had, but um, they haven't been passed on or they've been kind of uh, laid to the side because people have just become more dependent on going to the store and, and, and getting the things they need. And this is kind of going back to, I want to learn those skills that my forefathers had. I want to be able to, to be a provider and sustain my family in a much more efficient way than always having to depend on spending money and, and getting what big industry tells me that I need. So sometimes homesteading comes out of necessity to save money. Sometimes homesteading comes out of the desire to, to be more healthy and the food that you're eating to actually raise it yourself so you know what goes into it and you know what you actually put in your body. That can be another reason that homesteading exists. Um, I love what they said about homesteading does not have to mean that you have to own a big piece of land, a lot, a big farm. Um, there are a lot of farmers that are homesteaders, but there's a lot of homesteaders that don't have to have a farm. In fact, they don't even have to have a front yard. Um, there are people that live in apartments downtown in urban areas that can be homesteaders. They can have container uh, plants. They can have a few pots of tomatoes and, and vegetables. They can uh, cook more from scratch um, where the ingredients that they're cooking with is, is a lot better than what they might buy with all the preservatives in it uh, from the store. Um, a lot of it is preparedness, maybe um, Maybe they don't have any land to, to grow livestock or anything like that, but they've also learned how to plan for, for times of hardship and, and can food and, and have a pantry, have a stockpile. And so that is part of homesteading as well. This, uh, this can also involve the family teaching your children uh, life skills, real life skills that they need to learn in case they want to do this as well. Um, it could be homeschooling as well, um, or after school when they come home, teaching them the skills that, they, that you would like them to learn that haven't been taught over the last generation or so. I think another important thing is find other people in your community or in, in your area or region that, that's like-minded homesteaders. Um, I know Tangi and I, over the last few years, we have uh, made so many new friends among the homestead community and when we gather with them uh, and they put on workshops and there's conferences now for homesteading and the friends that we've made through that has really encouraged us and, and even inspired us to continue on this journey and, and uh, it just helps us know that what we're doing is is good and beneficial because we have other families that have become our friends that's going through this as well. Absolutely. I think uh, one of the most memorable conversations that I heard about, probably I think it was at the first uh, Homesteaders of America conference, there was a homeschool family that uh, traveled many hours to be at the conference and they went and told Amy, they said, thank you for doing this. There, we don't know anybody else that lives this way, and this was very encouraging, and this made us feel normal. Yeah. And um, you know, a lot of people don't understand the whole um, back to the land revival. It's kind of what it seems like. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think people have been kind of homesteading for a very long time, but I think the movement is growing right now just because there's a lot of things that um, we're more aware of. And, um, you know, and it, it's nice to have that sense of community. So, yeah, definitely go check out these conferences and these get-togethers. Um, if you're on social media, check out Homesteaders of America on um, yeah. Facebook. Um, there's other homestead groups, too. Um, but if you can find anybody local, um, that would definitely be an encouragement to you and your family. Yeah. I also think that there is this connection that we have today as modern-day homesteaders with the homesteaders of a hundred years ago, back during the Homestead Act, it was this can-do attitude. I mean, they were traveling out west, leaving everything they knew behind to, to start a new life for their family and, and do what they thought was best for them. And so 
I believe that that mindset still exists in the homesteaders today. Absolutely. And um, so the, the spirit of homesteading is, is alive and well. And definitely reach out and, and find those people that are out there. Maybe you would like to let us know what homesteading means to you or, or your thoughts on it. Leave that in the comments below. Um, it'd be great to see what your thoughts are on this. Um, don't forget to like our videos. That really helps with the YouTube analytics to, to put it out there for other people to see. Absolutely. And we're also on social media. So if you want to come hang out with us on Facebook, you can find us at Freedom Homestead. Um, we're also pretty active on Instagram as well. I'm Tangie underscore Freedom Homestead. And Jack underscore Freedom Homestead. Yeah. So that way you can kind of see what we're not putting on YouTube as far as what we do at our own homestead. Yeah. We really appreciate you watching this video. Hopefully this kind of helps clear things up or maybe it's just really confused you even more as to what homesteading is. So thank you for watching. And until next time.